Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, I simply adore good scary stories, Minnie. Yes, I do. She's lovely. Yes, she is. This is scandalous. Yes, it is. Whoa, got a red dude all right here. So you want to watch Black Butler? You do realize it's not going to be that simple. I've seen your kind pass through these parts before. The overconfident type that doesn't care about danger. I don't know why the fuck I'm so far away from the mic. You must first pass a series of tests in order to prove your worthiness. Luckily for you, I just so happen to be a certified ferryman for one such a journey. But I'm warning you right now, this ride's going to be a bumpy one. You will see things in this video that you can never unsee. I cannot allow you to move independent of your master. You see what I mean? Like, I'm the ferryman. And I can't even explain what the fuck that was. And this show is packed to the brim with shit like that, so don't you dare say I didn't let you know the risk ahead of time. Pick something that looks sturdy and hold on tight. Bonus points if that something happens to be your dick because we've arrived at the first trial. <laughs> this is the single gayest anime of all time. And I know it feels like I describe every anime that way now, but trust me, this is different. I'm getting a penis, butler. Sir? All right, buttle my penis. The paradox, of course, being that attractive men didn't exist until July 2nd, 2017, meaning the creator of Black Butler is obviously a time traveler. You can tell because they've never shown their face. Also, I say they because the creator is allegedly a woman, but... No, I'm not buying that for a minute, so they're probably just trans. Which ties back into the time traveler theory, because in the future, trans people will make up 100% of the population. If you want to learn more, you can go to https colon forward slash forward slash nation dot fox news dot com forward slash tucker dash carlson dash originals. The feminization of men is inevitable due to the oversaturation of it in modern media. Meaning if you can't bust the nut to a scene like this... S sebastian Please hold on a little longer, sir. You can do it. Then you're just on the wrong side of history, I don't know what else to tell you. And so lies your first trial. Black Butler is the future. To resist it is to resist humanity itself. This is simply one of the many truths you will have to accept before the end of our journey. So dropping the Ferryman Act for a second here, this show's fucking hilarious. Everyone on the staff is like a triple OG meme lord or some shit, I swear to god. <laughs> And you know, comedy is important, even when it's not happening. Like, before I decided to do Black Butler for this video, I kept running into a lot of anime that tried to escalate the seriousness of the plot, only for it to feel like a downgrade compared to the goofy shenanigans they had to set up the characters beforehand. A show like Noragami can start out with a good premise and fun ideas, only to transform into a cookie-cutter season of Bleach and ruin everything. Luckily, Black Butler is... Black Butler. The second episode specifically is probably the funniest thing Japan has ever made, and that's with the cookie cutter damsel in distress blood. Um, sir, something's off. I see something. Oh, what's wrong? Little girls here barren the woods. What is it? Someone find you, talk to me. It's coming. Oh, sir. I've had enough of your shames already! If one of you don't answer right now, I swear I will kill you! Why is that the light bringer? And so lies your second trial, Linkara. Yet another truth you'll have to accept before the end of our journey. I am genuinely surprised how consistently on model this series is. From fall 2008 to the beginning of 2017, this franchise has basically kept the exact same art style, just shinier as the years went on. And yeah, it was definitely more impressive back when it first came out, since most anime back then looked like low-budget hentai. A1 Pictures has still earned a piece of my respect that can never be taken away. I especially love all the expressions in this show, like the cute way they draw CL when he's embarrassed and he gets those lines underneath his eyes. Like really, the only thing that could permanently ruin this show's aesthetic is CGI horse-drawn carriages, but I highly doubt they'd stoop that low. Oh my god, bro. Oh, And so lies your third trial. CGI horses are eternal. To resist them is to resist humanity itself. Of course, I understand more than anybody that particular truth may be too much to handle, but don't quit on me yet, we still got one more. Black Butler's anime has a very interesting approach to filler. And by that I mean it's the only time the show is ever above average. Here's a list of every arc that's ever been animated. Here's a list of every arc that's a waste of time. And here's a list of everything that was adapted from the manga. 
there is a pattern here. To be fair, the manga hasn't finished yet versus the anime-only timeline that ended in 2010, so I'm not here to compare completed storylines when there isn't even more than one of them yet, but let's just say I have a very strong hunch that the anime-only canon will ultimately go down as the victor. Primarily due to the Curry Contest arc, yes, that is the actual title, which is unfortunately in both timelines. Now, I assure you. I am not racist towards Indian people. I very much appreciate them taking on the burden of heading every single tech company on the face of the earth. But basing an entire anime arc around the terrible food they make- Eat my poop, Uncle Stan. is a bad idea. Regardless, you asked for this, so I'm giving you the plot synopsis. Some piece of shit tries to use evil spices to turn everyone that ate the evil curry evil. They then counteract that with better curry to turn everyone back to normal. No, I am not describing a Powerpuff Girls episode. And of course, it's the most off-model arc in the entire franchise. Why wouldn't it be? Even A1 Pictures has higher standards than this. These Indian guys don't even show up in the anime-only timeline, bar a small cameo later on. So this was literally just to pat out time and throw a bone to the people that wanted to see this adapted. So naturally, I will proceed to never mention any of this again for the remainder of the video. <sighs> With everything I've said so far in mind, let's get into spoilers and look at the anime-only timeline. The first season is kind of fucking stupid. So this kid's parents were murdered, and as we all know, when your parents are murdered, a shadow organization takes you away to brand you and strap you to a table. Luckily, a rotoscope demon comes out of a portal and saves him, after which he makes a deal that if the demon helps him find the murderers, he'll wear increasingly effeminate clothing. Boy, it's a good thing that shadow organization that strapped you to that table had nothing to do with the murder. We wouldn't want this to be too easy. So just to recap, I'm one paragraph into explaining the backstory, and the main character already has three completely separate factions trying to kill him. Four, if you count the Queen of England, who was actually pulling the strings the whole time. So she dies, and the demon goes to eat the kid's soul, but it cuts to black before you can see what happened. Then we get season two. This is when A1 Pictures went sicko mode. Turns out the kid's soul was actually stolen by another demon named Claude. I'll go ahead and give you a moment on that one. And the entire second season is just the two of them fighting over who gets to eat the kid. Not to mention the most anime character of all time who, and I am not making this up, is named Transy. He's basically just there to run interference the whole fucking season. One thing. I prefer my roses displayed like this. Ole! And honestly, shit just gets more complicated from there on out. The season ends with the kid becoming a demon just before the original demon can eat his soul, all because of some random ass deal Transy makes with this third demon. I assume demon contracts have like a mind of their own in this universe, so there can be a third party to make things fair. It actually kind of reminded me of that one episode of No Game No Life where whatever becomes a part of the deal just happens and no one questions if it's physically possible or not. I can completely understand if you're not cool with that though, and even if you are, there's some really weird shit that happens to get to that twist in the first place. The demon lady has a magical throat. I don't... What? Watch closely. I'll show you something. Hey, Vsauce. Michael here. <laughs> Ironically, the filler in the second season is actually some of the most entertaining parts of it. I guess because A1 Pictures didn't have to adapt the filler this time and they could just have fun with their own versions of the characters. I make it sound like it's unfaithful though, but honestly, CL and Sebastian might be my favorite anime protagonists of all time. And that's entirely due to the way that they're treated in the anime and its dub. Also, the fan service, as you should have deciphered by now, Boy Pussy is very much a driving factor in this series. The only thing I will be tasting is the sweet flavor of CL Phantom Hives. Yeah. However, from what I understand, people may find it bothering that 13 year old boys are constantly being placed into sexually inspired situations throughout the series. And as the title of this video claims, this is the most sus anime ever made, but wouldn't a grown man who enjoys watching this series be the real sussy one in this scenario? Yeah. 7.9 out of 10. To get back to that, oh! 